This is going to come as a shock and a surprise to my regular viewers, but several weeks ago I decided to redo my room, which is at the same time my bedroom, my plant room, my filming room, you know, it's office, it's everything, everything happens here, except for the fun things. I used to have a very big desk in my room, and I think you're familiar with the filming angle, and the desk used to be here, it was huge, it was 140 by 60 centimeters, I believe, and I don't know what that is in inches or whatever it is used. It's a pretty big desk and it used to sit here. I had some pegboards on it. It was a, like a nice partition that I really enjoyed because people from the street tend to look in very rudely because, uh, you know, I mean, I understand. There's a bunch of light, there's a bunch of plants. I, I understand, I forgive them in a way that I don't. But suddenly I received a message into my brain that this desk can no longer stay in this space because it is simply too big. If I didn't have the grow tents, if I didn't have so many plants, which I clearly do, the desk had to go, it was taken away from the space and I just envisioned something different. I envisioned a solution that would at the same time give me space to work, it would give me space to edit, but also it will be kind of like an additional plant space, of course, shocking. It would be additional storage space and it would also at the same time be a space saving solution. That's like a lot of space in one sentence. And if you are a regular viewer, you know that I said that my October and November are gonna be kind of stressful. I had to do some pretty heavy administrational stuff that required all of my attention and I just couldn't dedicate so much time to filming videos, but I also couldn't just do this one thing. So I decided to take on this small project and to film the process. And I realized actually quite recently that whenever I am in these situations that, you know, are very stressful, that cause a lot of anxiety, that I essentially have no control over. I do be, you know, rearranging, I do be cleaning. I figured out that I take on these projects, these things that kind of help me regain control. Because of course it is very stressful when there is like a situation in your life and you have no control over it. And you know, you're just somehow expected to accept that. So I, you know, sort of think of these small things that I can do that will make me feel fulfilled, that will make it feel like I do have control over something. And that, this project was that for me. In a way, I do believe this is soothing. However, <laughs> footnote, I am also somewhat of a perfectionist. In the past, my perfectionism used to be like on a very, very high level, and I'm sort of over that now. And it's, you know, through these really small things, letting go of the small things that, you know, you're kind of able to let go of some of the bigger things. But, you know, I think like eight years ago or something like that, when I was at university, it was bad. It was really, really bad and it caused even more stress than necessary. So what I want to say with all of this is that if you relate to this, you may want to listen to me talk about the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. Whether you have clinical mental health issues such as depression or anxiety, or maybe if you suffer from some compulsive behaviors, or you simply want to show up for people in your life as the best version of yourself, therapy can help you with that. Therapy can provide you with tools to achieve this. BetterHelp mission is to make therapy more affordable, more accessible, which can be very useful if you live in an area where you simply do not have access to therapists or you do not have access to a therapist that is suitable for you. Here, BetterHelp can be of assistance because it is online and it makes finding an online therapist easier. You just have to fill out several questions and you can be matched with a new therapist as little as few days. Also, it can be very helpful if you're stranded with time, you know, maybe your schedule is very difficult and it's hard to go see a therapist in person, you can do it online, on your computer, on your tablet, whatever the device that you use. I don't even know all the devices. <laughs> it is easy to sign up and get started. There is a link in my description, betterhelp.com slash basyplants. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash basyplants. Clicking that link helps support me and my channel, but it is also good for you because it gives you 10% off of your first month of BetterHelp and you can see if online therapy is right for you. Also, if for whatever reason you're not vibing with your therapist, it is easy to make the switch free of charge and you don't have to worry about who is in your network, who is not in your network or anything else. It's completely normal and easy to do that. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. That is betterhelp.com slash basyplants. 
BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BasiePlans. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for sponsoring my channel and thank all of you for, you know, sticking through and watching this portion of the video. Now, let's go back to the main topic, which is the rearrange. I knew that I wanted a transformable and a flexible space and because I do have a background in architecture, if you did not know, I do have like a master's degree in architecture, just so you know, just so you know, a little, a little flex, I didn't do anything with it. <laughs> Terrible flex, it's terrible flex, but I know that the transformable solutions can be a great space saving measure. However, there is just like one tiny issue, like a bit of a hiccup here, and that is that my DIY skills are not that great. I also do not have many tools. I have like an Ikea drill, which is terrible. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Sorry, Ikea, do not recommend the drill. And I do not really have anything else. Sure, there are some saws, but they're like not the chainsaws or the table saws that you see in every single DOI project that people somehow have it. Like, what, what's up with that? I knew that I was not going to be completely DIYing this thing, but I also know that IKEA has this IVAR or EVAR, I don't know how that is pronounced, line of space saving solutions. There are shelves, there are desks, there are things, and it's sort of this modular system. So, you know, you can just select the individual pieces, like the sides of the shelves or like the shelf levels or the desk, and you can come up with a solution that it's going to be the best for you. And of course they do offer already, you know, finished solutions, but you don't really have to go for that because I don't know, like sometimes they find that I don't need as many shelves or I need more, or, you know, they will add on something that is very expensive, some boxes or like cabinets and I just do not want that. So I think it's like a great line that they have because you do not have to spend a lot of money. Actually, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to the money issue. You can sort of always add on to it. And if you remember in the past, I had two of the Ivar shelves or Evar shelves that I painted green, which was a terrible decision. It was not the green that I wanted. I wanted a different type of green. I was mixing my own colors and that's what we got. We went with it. It was... That was a big mistake. These shelves were sitting in my storage space that is also the summer kitchen, that is also like the packing space, clearly multifunctional spaces all around. And one actually is disassembled and it's on top of my tent to support another tent that is on top of my tent. Because I also didn't want to DIY like the support solution, so I used the sides of the shelves for that. I'm so smart. <laughs> with all of these. And then I say I'm not great at DIY. Come on, that was great DIY thinking. Anyways, I know that IKEA has this Ivar system and that they have like a foldable desk. Yes, it is much smaller, but I don't need so much space anymore at the desk. In the past, yes, I used to love to have like a large desk and maybe in the future I would love it again. But lately my desk has been filled out, you know, half of it or even more was filled out with plants and prop boxes. So I decided to go with something else and that is the transformable desk. Now let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, I am very cheap and that was essentially sort of, it was on the downfall. It turned out fine, spoiler, it turned out fine. However, I will just say that uh, getting back to that perfectionist thing, there are some things that didn't turn out quite great. I didn't like how some of it turned out and you can't really see the mistakes, but you know, I know that they are there and that sometimes bothers me. Actually not so much anymore, but as I was doing the project and as I was finishing it up, I just thought I was gonna give up and not finish it or do something else. So Ivor Foldable Desk is around, I actually don't know the US price, but I think here it is around 100, 110 euros. And if you ask me, that is an out outrageous price for what it is. I'm sorry, it is an outrageous price, but all the prices are outrageous. It's 2023. It's just like a wooden board that you can fold. It's really not high tech. It's not the best quality wood. It's not sanded down, which I still haven't done. And you know, sometimes I'll get wood splinters in my hands, which is very nice. Should really sand it down. And of course, I also knew that if I'm going to introduce this Ivor shelf back into the space, I'm gonna have at least two levels for the plants because clearly someone is not going to stop buying Hoyas, but you know, different topic. And then it started. So this is the shelf that we will be transforming. Why is, I hear people, why? Anyways, this is the shelf that we will be transforming. I picked a wonderful day. We are flirting with rain. If this interrupts, it's because it was raining and I had to stop my camera, but I need to disassemble it first. It's very dusty. 
it's awful green. This is not the color that I initially wanted it to be, but you know, I was mixing my own color. So that's what it turned out. It was supposed to actually be kind of like this dark grayish green, but here we are. So I'm gonna take it apart, wipe it down, and then just, you know, remove with the paint stripper. I've never used the paint stripper thing ever, like the solution or whatever. I can see that it's raining. I'm probably not gonna record the next part, even though it would be very thrilling to see me disassemble this. It's very easy, you just, you know, bang. Not like that. Ow! <laughs> Something like that. I decided that I can easily strip down this shelf. I watch a lot of channels on YouTube, a lot of videos that are just like DIY. I know, paint stripping, all of that. It It's supposed to be so easy. It looks so easy. So easy. It was not. It absolutely was not. It was horror. It was awful. It was, I'm not joking. It was, it was horrible. I did not manage to strip all of it. I bought the paint stripper and we only have one paint stripper here. There is only like one product. It says you are supposed to put the paint stripper on a piece of wood and after three to five minutes, you can start stripping. It didn't work. It removed a bit of it, but there was a lot left. I went through two cans of paint stripper, which is a lot. And it didn't do the best job. And I think the reason for that is because Ivar, the wood is not treated anyway. So I think it soaked up all the paint. When I was painting this, I didn't do any base coat, any base layer that I didn't do that. So I went just with the paint right on it. And I think that was a mistake, but that that's like past mirror's mistake. So you cannot really blame me in the present for it. And I wanted to avoid sanding so much, but I was like, we, we have to do it. We went into sanding. I had to buy the sanding pieces, which was additional 10 euros. And I sanded for two days, day and a half. And when I say days, I really mean like from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with like very short breaks. My hands were buzzing after. Uh, it was a lot of sanding. I would sand some of these pieces and they're not super large pieces anyways, but I would sand some of these pieces for like 10 minutes and you, you could see barely any paint being sanded off. And I really struggled here for a couple of days. I just really went back and forth between this, like, should I order the new pieces? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? And I didn't. You can pause the video and clap. You can congratulate me at this point. You can award me a, some sort of a prize for letting go of perfectionism because still you can see the paint on this, but it's fine. There are green plants on this shelf and I'm looking at the shelf right now. So that's why I'm looking off to the side and it's not really that noticeable. I just think, you know, people, when they walk into my room, they're not going to see the little imperfections in the sanding, in the paint stripping. They're gonna enter here and look at the three giant tents and think, what the heck? And they're gonna look at all the plants and they're gonna be like, wow, he really has some unresolved issues potentially. And I don't, I really don't, aside from perfectionism and anxiety and some other things. <laughs> Anyways. Assembling the Ivar shelves is always so frustrating to me. No matter how many times I do it, I always get frustrated because they are so wonky and they will remain wonky until you are finished. But I will just now leave you with a montage of me assembling the shelf, assembling the desk and putting the lights in and soon you will be able to see the final result. Because my space was very limited at this time and the old desk was still essentially assembled, I had to assemble this one on my bed. And let me tell you, it is not fun as it looks.
in the current setup, you will see that I have two plant shelves. I do have two LED lights. They're nine watt LED lights, so not the strongest. I don't know if this is going to be strong enough, but we'll see. I also have my desk lamp attached here so I can kind of use it when I'm having like my Hungarian class, when I'm editing, etc. I actually installed the pegboard here, but I don't really love this solution. I just don't like to have things out. So I think what I will do is I will get some boxes here that will go here to kind of organize the space. I think it will look better than just having everything out. And then we have the desk, which is folded. Most of the time it is folded, but when I have to edit or take photos, then I unfold it. So we're just going, I'm just gonna show you all of that now. Okay, first of all, I need you to know that I am in my sweatpants. I am in my sweatpants and I do not want to hear any judgment. I only changed the shirt for the video. This is the closed setup when the desk is closed. So we have a plant shelf here. I have this lamp, you can extend it. It did fall down the other day. And I have plants on top, which let me just show you. So I have some Finley Sony's, my Florida Beauty is here. I do think I may need to install like one more light, like right here, but I'm not really sure. I'll think about that, maybe not. And then down here, see, I don't really like that all of this is out and I will get some sort of like boxes. We're gonna talk about that stuff, that prop box in some future video. This is how it looks when it's closed. So not much to see here. Essentially you lift this and there is the small thing here, which, where is it? And you have like this, there's like a spot where it's supposed to go. So it kind of locks in and that's the desk. And then you can just sit here like so. I know I'm very tall, just no desk. Only the standing desk would help me because all of the desks are low for me. I'm like, 195. There is storage here. I do have like a blanket here, an odd blanket, and my camera equipment, some other stuff here. I want to get not see-through boxes for that, but I also don't want to spend money, so I'm gonna use what I have. I actually thought that the wooden leg would get into my way, but it doesn't. So obviously you can sit at the desk, and then, you know, you can just work, edit, pretend to type, Actually, you know what, this is a, I have to delete this. This is an idea for the next video. <laughs> Obviously, it's a plant shelf. I thought it would be nice to have also like a small terrarium here so you can kind of look at it, but I would have to give up this space. Initially, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have like a cabinet here, one of those IKEA cabinets for storage. It was supposed to be full storage shelf. However, instead of that, I decided to get rid of the clothes that I don't wear so I can store those things in the closet so I can put the plants here. You really have to weigh your priorities. I don't really love this. I am going to redo it. It doesn't really match with the plants. Maybe to, if it was some something more solid here, so like the boxes, then it would look a little bit better, but I don't think I would put plants here. I feel it really needs something solid. So maybe it's going to be like a terrarium. If this was like a closed off space, I wouldn't mind, but you know, it's also good. You can move the laptop there, I don't know. You can put coffee there, that's also useful. It's actually not that small of a desk. It's not big, but it's like just the right amount of space that you would need to write something, to do stuff on your laptop, on your computer. Obviously you cannot put a desktop here. The storage below, very good, I like that. You can finish this however you want. Don't paint it green. Also I think that paint, because I think I told the guy at the paint Think store, hardware store, <laughs> that I will be putting plants in it. I need something that's like gonna be water resistant. I think he gave me like an outdoor Spain for like concrete. And it's also for wood, but it's like for playgrounds and stuff. So it was like really on there. What I wanted to also do is stain it with wax. I ran out of time. It is a bit wobbly. I do have one complaint, aside from the price, aside from, you know, it not being finished. I really wish it was sanded better. I do have another complaint, I guess it's not just one complaint. I wish there was some sort of a magnet here on the leg. When you are not looking, which most of us don't, I don't think that people typically would look at this. When you're not looking and you do this, it will come out. So when you 
let go of this, you know, it's not a big issue. You can just push this back and kind of hold it a bit and then let it go down and it's fine. But I really wish there was a magnet and maybe I will install it on the bottom one. I think here where it meets the shelf, a magnet can be installed. And then when I push it, it will just snap into place by itself. The fuzzy thing keeps falling off. I don't actually see, you're so far away from me, but I see that the light is in the way. So we're just gonna move it here. That is essentially the setup. And I think this is gonna be like great for repotting. I feel, aside that I don't see anything from this distance, it's good. I think this is gonna be good for repotting. I think you will be able to see much more. I also kind of like that these drape down. So that's why I feel that we need like something here. That is all for the video. I do hope that you like this setup. I hope that inspired some of you. I think it's not only for the plants. If you know somehow someone else got into this video and you watched until the end, this can also be books. It doesn't have to be a plant. Plants are better, but you know, cause books were, I tried to read once upon a time. <laughs> I think this can be just a great solution for small spaces, small offices, small rooms. It is really for small spaces. If I had an office, I obviously wouldn't go with this. I would go like with a net, just a big standing desk that it can, you know, be lifted and what's the opposite of lifted? It can go up and down. Change the word if you don't know it. So obviously this is not for everyone. I understand that. I'm very, very happy with what we have achieved here. And that is where I will leave it. If you like the video, you should definitely subscribe, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. What do you think about the setup? Let me know. That's that, that is all for the video. I will see you in the next one. Have a lovely weekend, that's all. I really should send it now. Wood fibers are getting stuck into me. Life is pain, why? <laughs> What a great way to end a video. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons for all of their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons, my three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Anne Magret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C, Betsy, Bougie Panda, Brett Noble, Catherine Molina, Christy Claire Cola, Colleen Coyle Levi, Daniela, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Erin Keenan, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppingcamp, Hoji Scott, Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Young. Anna Griffin, Jessica Chio, Yavin Denot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Steph, Lisa Mary MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Harmer, Selena Novosatsky, Mario West, Mars B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Moa Edmund, Nelly Yang, Niha Basso, Nili Spicer, Nicole Moreau, Nicole Caleb of Schlieve Tropicals, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plan Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Rue, Salome Adal, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martins, Tia B, TJW, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Youth of the Wallamut, Zerdorama, and Zlokob Nipponi. Big thank you to my $3 patrons, Andy H, Angelina Parnon, Brenda Little, Kelone, Constance, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Halling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Syke, Sarah, Ringlo, and Tang Watana Sria Cool. And thank you to my $1 patrons, one anonymous patron, Alice Borland, Brandon Pacheco, Kari, Christina Greengrass, Control Helvetica, Deli Heredia, EDW, Amelia Bronson, John Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann Supermanium, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chun Muller, and Tracy the Eye Biller.